Welcome to Recap King. In this video, we will explain Bulletproof Monk. This movie tells the story of an immortal kung fu master who embarks on a mission to find a worthy protege to take over his job of protecting an ancient scroll. After traveling all the way to America, he finally found a candidate. Will the candidate be his successor? Let's find out in Bulletproof Monk. Bulletproof Monk begins in 1943 in the Tibetan Plateau where a monk named Chen is engaged in a fierce battle with his teacher. Chen managed to win the battle, which means he has met the requirements to become a master. His teacher then said that Chen had fulfilled a series of prophecies that marked him as his successor. He is entrusted with guarding the scroll that his teacher has protected, which contains knowledge that will make anyone who reads it strong, youthful, and immune to injury. For 60 years, the master protected the sacred scroll and now he has found an heir who will carry on his noble task. After setting Chen to be his successor, the teacher then transferred all the power and knowledge he had while protecting the holy scroll. Because the scroll's power can make the user stay young, his teacher turns old after transferring all his power to Chen. Shortly after the Chen inherit the scrolls and powers from the master, their temple is attacked by German soldiers led by a man named Strucker who has ambitions to obtain the sacred scroll. In the attack, all the monks in the temple were executed by German soldiers, even the teacher was killed. The teacher advised Chen to always protect the scroll until he found the next heir towards his death. After the death of his teacher, Chen faced the entire German army and was able to defeat them all alone. Chen and Strucker then face off one-on-one, -on -one, but he chose to run away to protect the heirloom scroll. Sixty years later, in the year 2003 to be exact, a pickpocket named Carr was carrying out his actions in the crowd of people passing by at the station. Carr's pickpocketing action was discovered by the police, but he managed to escape from them. On the other hand, Chen had apparently been in America, not far from Carr's station used to pickpocket. Chen who had been hiding from the pursuit of people who wanted the holy scroll he had, then tried to escape by entering the crowd of people who packed the station. While escaping through the crowd, he and Carr accidentally collide. As the two of them were about to leave the crowd, they heard someone screaming for help because a little girl had fallen and her legs were caught in the train tracks. Suddenly Chen and Carr immediately jumped into the train tracks and saved the little girl. Chen was quite impressed by Carr who bravely jumped into the train tracks to save someone's life and risked his own life. After successfully rescuing the little girl, Chen and Carr became acquainted with each other. However, unbeknownst to him, Carr stole the holy scroll from his bag. Carr then left Chen and was about to go home. However, suddenly he is attacked by a group of men who are members of a pickpocket gang that controls the area. Apparently they don't like Carr's behavior who pickpockets in their territory at will. Because previously, his bag had disappeared somewhere when it collided with Chen in the crowd, Carr could only give the scroll he stole to the gang leader. He was then beaten and asked to hand over all the proceeds of the theft. The leader of the pickpocket gang then throws the scroll away and beats Carr because he thinks Carr has insulted him. Chen, who had been following Carr for a long time, managed to get the scroll back, but he did not move from his place and chose to observe Carr quietly. When the gang leader was about to kill Carr, his action was successfully stopped by a girl who was one of the gang members. After being persuaded by the girl, Carr was finally released. After a long night at the train station, Carr finally arrived at his home which also his workplace, the Golden Palace Cinema. With the permission of Mr. Kajima, his kind-hearted boss, he is allowed to live in the cinema for relatively cheap rent. When he was about to take a drink, he was surprised by the appearance of Chen in his place. Carr then chased him away, but Chen ignored him because he was still curious about Carr's figure. Carr tried to force Chen away, but he can easily parry all of Carr's attacks. Carr finally gives up and asks what he wants from him and why he is being chased by people in suits. Chen didn't answer Carr's question and chose to sleep. On the other hand, Jade, the girl who had saved Carr from the gang leader decided to leave the pickpocket gang. When she was about to go home, she realized that her necklace was missing and assumed that Carr had stolen it while fighting with him. The next day, Strucker is seen entering a building accompanied by his granddaughter, Nina. Strucker apparently still has ambitions to get the magic scroll owned by Chen and orders Nina to keep chasing him. On the other hand, when Carr is carrying out his pickpocketing on the street, Chen follows him and returns the wallet that he had stolen to its owner. While Carr and Chen were arguing, Jade came and asked Carr to return her necklace. Jade said that the necklace was very precious to her because it was left by her mother. Not long after, Nina's men were seen trying to catch Chen. Seeing Chen running away, Carr tried to block Nina's men. Carr and Chen were then involved in a chase with Nina's men until in the end they both hid in the cellar of the Asian laundromat. It turns out that the cellar is a temporary residence for the monks who have always helped Chen. 
Chen and Carr's arrival was welcomed by the monks. Chen then engages in a serious conversation with the leading monks about the right candidate to inherit the magic scroll. The leader of the monks recommended several young monks who he thinks are competent enough to be the heir to the magic scroll. But Chen turns out to have his own judgment in determining the heir to inherit the magic scroll. Although he didn't say it directly to the monks, Chen clearly implied that he had chosen Carr as his heir. Moreover, he has been determined to teach Carr Kung Fu martial arts, as the teacher taught him many years ago. One day, when Carr and Chen finish their Kung Fu training in an abandoned building, they are both attacked by mercenaries sent by Nina who shoot at them from a helicopter. Chen then entrusts the magic scroll to Carr, while he drops the helicopter so it will no longer attack them. Chen managed to grab hold of the helicopter and knock the mercenaries down. However, this action made the helicopter's speed unstable and hit the giant satellite dish on the roof of the building. Unfortunately, when the satellite dish fell, the wires wrapped around Carr's legs until he was dragged and almost fell from a height. Carr managed to survive by clinging to the side of the building, but the magic scroll he was carrying fell down and was immediately picked up by Nina. After getting the scroll, Nina withdrew her troops and left immediately. Meanwhile, Carr who lost the scroll entrusted to him, thought that he was not worthy of being the successor of Chen to protect the magic scroll. He was nothing, just a street pickpocket. But Chen then reveals about Strucker and the people trying to snatch the magic scroll for years. He then managed to convince Carr by revealing the tremendous power obtained by anyone who has the magic scroll. On the other hand, Nina, who had returned to the base, immediately handed the magic scroll to Strucker. The old man looked very happy because he finally got the magic scroll he had aimed for for years. But when he was about to read the scroll, how surprised he was when he found out that the scroll's contents were just a noodle soup recipe. Finally, it was revealed that all the knowledge contained in the magic scroll had been copied into Chen's body and into his mind so that the knowledge and power stored in the magic scroll did not fall into the wrong hands. Feeling cheated, Nina investigates Carr's background and manages to find out where he lives. Nina then went to the Golden Palace Cinema and met with Mr. Kajima. Because Mr. Kajima refuses to divulge anything about Carr, so Nina kills the old man. Not long after, Carr and Chen arrived at the Golden Palace and saw that the situation was in shambles. Carr was looking for the whereabouts of Mr. Kajima and found the old man lying lifeless. He was devastated by the death of the only person who cared so much for him. After the death of Mr. Kajima, Chen then feels very guilty for involving Carr and putting those around him in danger. Therefore, he decided to stay away from Carr and no longer involve the young man in his affairs regarding the magic scroll. After Chen left, Carr, who realized that his struggle must continue, then went to the cellar which is the headquarters of the monks to find Chen. Carr expresses his desire to fight alongside Chen and avenge Mr. Kajima so that his struggle is not in vain. Knowing Carr's determined determination, Chen accepted him back. However, at the same time, Nina and her men managed to track down the location where Chen was hiding because one of the monks had betrayed him. However, when she arrived at the cellar, Nina couldn't find him because he had fled with Carr through the sewers. Because she could not find Chen, Nina and her men then arrested the monks and took them to Strucker's headquarters. It looks like Strucker already knows that Chen has memorized the contents of the magic scroll, so he has prepared a tool that can be used to know other people's thoughts. Strucker intends to use it to find out Chen's mind. But before that, he will test the tool's effectiveness by trying it on one of the monks. Unfortunately, he did not get any information from the monk. On the other hand, Carr and Chen intend to go to Jade's house to hide from Nina and her men. Unexpectedly, Jade's house turned out to be very grand, even though she seemed very comfortable on the streets with a gang of pickpockets. After meeting with Jade, Carr and Chen finally find out that Jade's father is a Russian crime lord who is currently in prison. The trio is interrupted by Nina and her men, who storm Jade's residence and capture Chen with stun guns. Nina immediately took the monk back to their headquarters. Knowing Chen has been caught, Carr is determined to save him. With the help of Jade, Carr manages to infiltrate Strucker's base and distract the guards. Meanwhile, Nina approached Chen who was being held captive and began to scan the writing on his body. On the other hand, Strucker begins to read the scroll on Chen's body and regains his youth. However, Strucker discovers that the last verse of the magic scroll has been lost and urges him to reveal the verse he has memorized. Chen chose to remain silent, so Strucker decided to put him on a mind reader. Before Strucker can scan Chen's brain, Carr comes and distracts him and lets Chen free himself. After being freed, Chen and Carr were involved in a fierce battle against Strucker who had obtained the power of the magic scroll. As a result, even the weakest Carr can be easily defeated and thrown by Strucker until his body is crushed by the rubble. Meanwhile, Jade has to fight with Nina, where she manages to defeat Nina and then free the monks held captive by Strucker. 
When Chen was pushed by Strucker to the roof of the building, Carr who was still alive, then tried to save him. However, Strucker manages to strangle Carr and intends to drop him from a height if Chen doesn't mention the last verse of the magic scroll stored in his brain memory. But Chen ignores him and tells Carr that he has the power to defeat Strucker. With full confidence, Carr tried to fight Strucker and was able to kick him down. Chen manages to catch Strucker and offers to help him as long as he turns into a good person and regrets his actions. But Strucker refused and chose to jump from a height. After that, Chen and Carr returned to the headquarters and met with Jade and the monks. In front of everyone, Chen tells Carr that he is his successor to protect the magic scroll. Chen then transfers all his strength to Carr and turns into an old man. Strucker is still alive and tries to kill Chen, but Jade swiftly saves Chen by sacrificing herself. Seeing this, Carr immediately attacked Strucker until he was thrown and then died after being hit by a large falling statue. Carr then approached Jade who was lying weak after being shot by Strucker but he was surprised to find out that Jade had the same scroll content on her body. Chen then explains that his successor is Carr and Jade. Jade finally woke up and the wound slowly healed. The film ends when the aged Chen meets with Carr and Jade the following day and tells them each half of the last verse of the magic scroll. It is intended that Carr and Jade continue to be united and cannot be separated.